Pods in and welcome to <clears throat> Monday morning. Um, yes, that track is my track. No, you can't get it, and it's never ever going to be released. Um, not really going to go into the ins and outs of reasons why. Um, let's just say there's a few members of management that are no longer members of management and a, uh, a few different people all having massive arguments over it. So um, we've decided to knock it on the head and I will be keeping it just for myself, exclusively for my sets, which is actually quite cool, guys. That's um, This is completely off topic from the start. Um, but that's what quite a lot of big artists do and that's how they keep their their sets fresh because essentially, unless you're in this client group or you're gonna come and watch me DJ, you're not gonna to get to hear that song. So it's actually gonna be quite special and quite unique. I think that's something I'm gonna start doing with it more. So uh, as soon as songs are out and everyone can get them and they end up on the radio, they generally tend to have a shelf life of uh, a few weeks, months, if that sometimes. So again, if you know, if you guys could listen to that song whenever you wanted, all day, every day, it would probably get pretty boring pretty quickly. So a little bit of a method in the madness, but you can enjoy it here each and every morning. So guys, so this morning's training, and please do not go deep on what I'm about to ask you to do. It will be one sentence or two max. I don't want chapter and verse about the huge argument you had with your wife and what happened and how it made you feel and this, that, or what happened with your boss or the huge monumental 17 paragraph backstory as to why you're not taking action or any of that energy sapping mind draining crap. I want each of you to post one thing that has happened and I don't want more than one or two sentences, maximum, one thing that has happened that made you feel angry, made you feel frustrated, made you feel let down that you used as an excuse and it was an excuse for quitting for giving up for not going to the gym for eating shit for getting pissed for taking drugs for getting into a fight, any form of those things, any kind of failure, setback, disappointment, situation, keep it short. I want to know one thing from each of you that happened that, that made you feel that way. So before you guys start to come back with those, because I want to make this... Um, quite interactive today as well as fired up and motivated so again whilst you're writing that afterwards or before i want you to drop i'm going to go through, i've got some so many trainings planned now guys i went on a mission last week i'm literally i'll give you some of the titles i've probably got 20 30 massive life-changing coaching sessions planned for you guys uh, as well as some big guest speakers coming in. Guys, can we stop lurking? We've got one person so far that's put being ill. Fran, I appreciate you for putting that. But either you're all sat here hiding like fucking children in your bedrooms, or none of you have had any failures, disappointments, arguments, letdowns. No one's pissed you off. Nothing's made you angry. No one's frustrated you. Um, if so, we'll, we'll log off after a Q&A in four minutes and not bother with the training. Life events, Artie. Get specific. What life event? 
Okay, we're either all saying, Caroline, thank you. So we're all either all saying that you're all perfect and nothing's happened. Okay, now let's get deep on these. Caroline, why did your husband piss you off? Laura, why did your boss piss you off? Fee, which choices? Jane, perfect. Jane's is the one that I'm looking for. It's got to give me something to go off. Okay, Diane, why did he piss you off? What did he say that pissed you off? This is good, guys. Thank you. This is what this, these trainings need to be about. Okay, Caroline, how did he let you down? Ken, I said I don't want chapter and verse, but I need a little bit more to go off, okay? Good, these are good. Okay, Rosie, arguments. What are the arguments about? Give me one argument. Amazing. Right, this is enough to go off, okay? So, again, just drop me a quick yes if you also keep getting started with something. Health, fitness, fat loss, being a better wife, being a better, better husband, being a better parent, being more present, having less time on your phone, making better choices, not drinking as much, stopping smoking, stopping being so angry and reactive. So you've made a decision to get started with, let's call it, a positive habit change. Okay, Lisa, my son's got autism. So do I have autism. You might have noticed with the lists. Okay, how, how, what, how has that made you feel angry, frustrated, disappointed, or, or let down? Okay, these are good now. These are really, really good. It's loads of me to go off. Keep going if you think of any extras. Okay, Jan, what mental health issue were you diagnosed with? So, this is epic, guys. This is loads to go off. You've got to remember, guys, the more you get involved in these trainings, it's like having private coaching. And private coaching is £250 for a 45-minute session. So think of the value you're getting if you're willing to step up and ask questions. Okay, first of all, Jan, this is going to trigger the shit out of you. You can't be diagnosed with depression. I'll come on to that. That's coming from a man who has been diagnosed with depression before anyone calls me out. Good, Caroline, that's enough. So, we started this thing, this positive thing, the fat loss plan, the mindset plan, thinking more positively, doing personal development, eating better. And then, we just always end up quitting. Stopping and starting. Drop me a yes if this is you, because this is me, definitely. I'm going to do this, and we fly it at 100 miles an hour. And then we quit. Or we keep giving up. Or we come out with what now is my favourite phrase in the world to take the piss out of. I fell off the wagon. No, you didn't. Because it wasn't an accident. Nobody pushed you. And you didn't fucking fall. Take responsibility and be honest with yourself. No one ever fell off any wagon. Anybody wants to counter that with an argument? Let's have an open debate now. Did you fall off of the wagon? Was it a trip? 
Was it an accident? Did somebody push you? No. You didn't fall off of any wagon because it wasn't an accident. It was a decision, a choice. And until you have the gahunas to be able to say, hands up, I didn't fall off the wagon, I made a decision. I made a choice. That doesn't mean it's easy to not mess up. I messed up this week, which I'll come on to, which is one of the points. But again, what Mark says, we can't keep it consistent. We say we're all or nothing. All or nothing will always end up back at square one. In fact, I'm going to type that out so I can all, everyone needs to write this down. All or nothing always ends up back at square one or worse. No, you don't fall off, Mark. You jump off. You decide to step off. You never fall off. A fall is an accident. It's never an accident. One of the best nutrition, Charles, Charles Polquin, uh, one of the best nutritionists this country's ever had. Um, unfortunately, yeah, of course you can, Mark. Uh, unfortunately, um, deceased now. Absolute legend. Okay, and again, he said the same thing. I've, I've in all my life, I've never drunk or eaten anything by mistake. That's reality. That's a fact. We don't eat or drink. That doesn't mean a something subconscious drives us to do it. And we lose control and we're not in charge of our own decisions. But we still didn't fall. We still had the decision. So in fact, it's just really bad mind management. Very bad decision making. That's what it is. We didn't fall. We made a bad decision. So start to change the language. If you've had a bad week, your check-in should say, Lee, I made some really bad decisions and choices this week. What can I do to improve next week? Not I fell off a wagon. That's a victim mentality. That's a pussy mentality. That's a hiding away lurking mentality. That's a seeking, looking to make it someone or something else's responsibility mentality. And that person will always go backwards. So why does this happen? Why does it happen? Why do we make bad decisions and choices? Everyone commit now to never saying you fell off a wagon again. Because if you say that, you're a liar. You don't like that, I'm okay with that. Which will lead me into exactly what I'm going to come on to. If any single one of you absolutely detests me and wants to stab my voodoo doll, into the middle of next week as a result of what I'm about to say, I'm okay with that. Because your opinion is none of my business. As long as I'm okay with what I've said, then that's okay. And I respect your thoughts either way. And I'm okay with your thoughts. I'm okay with being hated. I'm okay with people disagreeing with me. I'm okay with people having different opinions. I'm okay with people thinking I'm full of shit. Because I'm not. If I think those things about myself, then I'm not okay with it. Because what we say about ourselves, to ourselves, is everything. This is why you need to be very careful, Jan, which is what I'm going to come on to. So... We could look at these reasons. Why does it always happen? 
which is the what, why lesson apply. <laughs> Luke, stop making me laugh. So why does this happen? Let's look at the different theories. No emotional attachment to the goal. Probably what weren't thinking about that when you went on the wine. No leverage, maybe. All the goals are external, not internal, maybe. Avoidance of discomfort, very often. It's uncomfortable saying no. It's uncomfortable going to the gym. It's uncomfortable getting up early. You're not afraid of changing. You just know it's going to be uncomfortable. So you avoid it. That's natural. The body will naturally move towards safety and avoid discomfort every single time unless we mentally reset it, which is why journaling is so important. No proper plan. Again, Trudy, you've got to change that. No. Think about what you have just said there. Thoughts become things. Thoughts become beliefs. If you think you're weak, of course you're weak. You're telling yourself you're weak. I am every morning. I am a world-class coach who changes, saves and impacts lives. I'm a patient, driven, positive, emotionally connected man who is trying my best to have an impact on the world and be the best possible role model to my son. I define who I am and I remind myself every day. And guess what? When I've written that down for probably four to 500 days on the trot now, guess who I become? Guess what my beliefs are? Imagine if I got up every morning and just put, I am weak, I am a failure, I am not good enough, I have depression, I have anxiety, it's different for me. Giant fucking pity party. Guess what my mind will believe when I start to continue to tell it that day after day. You have to remember guys, your subconscious mind doesn't know whether you're being a drama queen or not. It just knows what you're telling it and it accepts it as the truth. So if you tell it enough times, it will believe you. Could be that we haven't had the right coaching. Could be that the expectations were too high. We didn't manage the expectations. Could be that we believe it's impossible. Some people believe it's impossible to be happy. Guess what? If you tell yourself it's impossible to be happy, Guess what you will do? Guess what Guess what emotions you will experience more of? Guess what happens if you tell yourself you're impossible to love and you're never going to meet anyone? You'll be impossible to love and you'll never meet anyone. Why? Because it's the energy that you're giving out. Mark, I'll pull out those coaching points for the Q&A. Message me exactly what you in fact no don't message me um if you haven't done you if you've done your check-in message me if you haven't put all those questions that you asked in the do you have any questions for me section of your check-in again look at what you're doing feed that's my script taking advantage taking ownership of it it's mine i will never be happy or loved guess what the more times you say it the more likely it is to happen Imagine you still know it's in the past. Again, you're doing this, you do this all the time, Fee. You're stuck with your memories of the past rather than focusing on a vision of the future. Imagine telling yourself, I am lovable, I am worthy, I am valued. I will get there. I am good enough. I am focused on a vision of my future, not shackled by memories of my past. I am doing my best. I am positive, I am driven, I am focused, I am a winner. I am a good mum, I am a good woman, I am doing my best. Or you can keep talking shit about memories of your past. 
Francine, exactly right. Love yourself. If you don't love yourself first, how the fuck do you expect anyone else to? So focus on that first. This is why most relationships fail, guys. Almost every, how many relationships fail now? Thousands and thousands and thousands. Why? Because the person getting into the, oh, fucking hell, we're off on one here. The person getting into the relationship isn't happy on their own. So how the fuck can you be happy with someone else? You can't. You're not happy being single, so you look for a relationship to make you happy. Trust me on one thing, if you are not happy being single, you will not be happy in a relationship. Because you are taking in the energy of loneliness. And you are looking for that other person to fill the void and that's not fair. That's why it goes wrong. That's why they trigger you all the time. That's why you make everything about them. Their fault. My husband this, my wife that. Victoria Allen, I'm getting divorced and getting married again in June. Amazing. Life-changing decision. It's not, uh, not going to be allowed to stay stuck in an unhappy relationship like many people are. Why? Because they're more afraid of being on their own than they are than staying in, in the soul-sucking shit that they call a relationship. They don't have the balls to take action. They can't see a vision of the future because they're shackled with memories of the past. You'll never find love when you're looking for it. Think about what happens. So we're single, we're lonely, we're a two, our energy's poor. What then tends to happen? We, mo we moan, blame, complain, we're lonely. What happens when we go lonely? We go to the pub, we go out, we go to socials, looking, actively looking to find a partner when our energy is a two, rather than focusing on ourselves. And guess what happens? Then we find another person who's a two, another lonely motherfucker in the pub, and we meet whilst pissed and go home and have sex. And then the first three months is a whirlwind of booze and drugs and sex and honeymoon. And then unfortunately, very often a child is born. And then all of a sudden, Things aren't exciting anymore. The relationship wasn't built on anything apart from filling the void of loneliness. Two depressed, lonely people filling each other's voids. No common interests, no values, no drives, both with really shit energy. So the energy comes together. And they pull each other down even further. This is why couples fight. This is why couples are aggressive. This is why there's physical abuse in relationships. So again, we should never even be, you know, anyone who's looking for a relationship to fill a void because they're lonely, look at yourself first. Look at what you're bringing. Are you able to go into that relationship as a straight 10 out of 10, energy, value, drive, focus, not needing any motherfucker in your life to make you happy? And is that other person bringing the same amount of energy to that relationship? If so, you'll most likely live happily ever after. But trust me, if you're not happy on your own, you're not going to be happy with another person. I guarantee you that one. So back to the point of the training. <laughs> so very often, why this failure happens... So we've gone through the what's, right? You've all told me what has happened. Oh, you absolute twat. There's that many comments, they've all disappeared. Right, I'm gonna use, a, I'm gonna use my own example. You guys can all apply this same thing. Some of you might find this a bit personal, by the way. Um, by the way, Jan, just to drill down on that, you don't have depression. You have low energy. You may be experiencing 
highly depressed emotions to a level that you are suicidal. I was experiencing highly depressed and anxious emotions to the level where I attempted to take my own life twice. So don't think I don't know what I'm talking about. But you cannot have depression. If we have depression and we diagnose, this is going to trigger the shit out of some of you. How do you test for it? What tests did they do to let you know that you've got depression? Or did you just go down and tell them that you're feeling really down and that your energy is really low? When did you catch it? How did you once have depression and then not have depression? Because I wasn't depressed when I was 14. So how did I become depressed? How did I catch it? I didn't. I took lots of drugs. I drank lots of alcohol. I got lost. I had no vision. I had no purpose. I adopted a victim mentality. I started making excuses. I started making everything somebody else's responsibility. I started validating my own behavior. I was constantly eating shit or not eating at all. Filling the void of unhappiness in my life with alcohol, drugs, gambling, and pornography. There you go. How's that for a truth? No vision, no purpose, no drive, no goals. And then I started doing personal development and I did it every day. That was 2011. I've done it every day since. I had a wobble and attempt in my life again in 2013, even though I was doing it. So it's not fucking easy guys. But you have to find a, you don't rather than if what will happen, Jan, if you say I have depression, you will start to say things like my depression, my anxiety, my bipolar, my personality disorder, my mum dying, my problems, my mental health. And when you put my in front of it, it becomes part of your identity. You take ownership of it. What happens when we take ownership of something and we make it our own? We start to love it. We start to get attached to it. And then something even worse happens because you have been diagnosed with depression. People start to make your behavior. Okay. They start to pussyfoot around you. They start to give you more love, attention and affection because they feel sorry for you. Guess what then happens? You get addicted to that extra love, that extra attention, that extra affection. And that becomes an addiction in itself until you meet more people who are feeling the same. And you all sit at the bottom of the tree and you have a giant fucking pity party together about how depressed you are and how life's different for you. I've been there. Or we make a decision. Okay, I am feeling depressed. Jan, I have no doubt that you are feeling depressed. You wouldn't have gone to go and get a diagnosis. I fucking hate that word. If you weren't feeling highly depressed, but you don't have it. So drop that today. Drop that story. And think about what am I going to do to feel a different way? How can I change my state? Morning walk, personal development, cold shower, creating a mission, creating a focus, creating a purpose. Because when we're not focused on what we're doing, what we want and how we want our life to be and engaged by an exhilarating, exciting vision of our future that we are working towards. We are sat bored, burned out, thinking about how we feel. That's how people feel depressed. Because all they're focused on is how they are feeling, not what they are doing. When you are feeling that way, it's very hard to start doing, which is why you have to start doing it one day at a time. Today, you could commit to one cold shower, one 30 minute walk with personal development, some stretches, and again, some personal development before bed that will start to move the needle of your life forwards. And then you need to repeat that each day. So what actually happened? What example was I gonna use? What actually happened? Okay, so this is an example. Who remembers Clint Pass? So Clint Pass was one of my trolls. Clint Pass put a very nice, Post, started comment on every post on my social media. 
Um, that I only look the way I look because of all the steroids and growth hormone that I take. Um, that I only train and look good because I'm so fucking insecure. Um, that he hopes that I have a heart attack and die because I'm a fucking lying cheat. Um, that I uh, uh, that I sell steroids and growth hormone to all of you guys as well. That's how I make my money. It's not really through coaching. It's just through selling steroids to you guys. Hope you're all enjoying your testosterone cycles that I've got you on. And everything in between, okay? So this guy's gone to town. So this same situation might be your husband or boss or someone else saying or doing something that's pissing you off, okay? Now, that's the what, what happened. Then we need to move to the why. Well, why did it happen? Well, Clint's clearly in a fucking bad place. That's why it happened. I feel really sorry for him. He's spending his time scrolling on social media, looking at people with better physiques than him. I had one yesterday, Luke, actually. I want to ask you if you know him, someone from Eckington. Had a massive pop at me yesterday. <coughs> um, he's probably never had any consistency at the gym. He's probably never had any help and support. Probably, he, he's probably really lonely. He's probably really bored. Maybe doesn't have anyone in his life. Probably taking drugs and drinking rather than going to the gym. And he's seen this person that absolutely, RT, is a reflection of everything that he'd like to be that isn't. And it's triggered the fuck out of him because he's not yet found the strength to move from where he is and I was to take an action and asking for help. You know, a normal person would have said, mate, you're, mate, you're looking incredible. How do I get on board? Can you help me? So that's what happened. Why did it happen? Yeah, a bit of jealousy, boredom, might just be a prick. Um, but then we have to think, so what, what, what happened? What did old Lee do? This used to happen loads in the past, okay? So what, why, lesson, apply. So again, what lessons did I learn? Exactly what Artie said, that's not about me. Is it true? Do I sell steroids and growth hormone? No, so why would I react to it? Do I take steroids and growth hormone? No. So why would I react to it? Is it true? No. Is it about me? No. Is it gonna hurt me or my family? No. But again, the old Lee, and this is where some of you may be when you're talking about these situations with your bosses and partners, which seem to be the current thing. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you are talking to me like that, you little prick? I'll come to Liverpool and I'll paste your fucking face off your head into the middle of next week if you ever fucking comment on my social media again. That's old Lee. And then old Lee... Old Lee... I'll help you, Jan. I'll drop you a message. Old Lee used to do that all day, every day. Get sucked into these arguments every time someone commented. You guys have seen, you guys, I don't know if you guys follow my main Facebook page or um, my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram because I'm posting loads of great content on there and I'm going to be doing a, a motivational reel every single day. I'm off to Ireland on the 9th, 10th and 11th of February for three days of nude photography for the gram uh, and also motivational reels feelings. So we're going to be doing 60 days worth of reels, short, sharp things that you can watch that will just give you a quick pick up. So, um, I can't remember what the point of that was. Oh yeah, Instagram. So every day, okay, if you look on angry, reactive, frustrated, having to fight my own corner and thinking I was weak, 
if I didn't fight my own corner, that I was being a pussy, that I needed to stand up for myself. Um, you know, me and Paul have both had the same guy as well, a troll who Paul actually had to call the police on because he started making threats against his family. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, if you're gonna put yourself out there, if you're gonna do this, you're gonna get a lot of shit, but it's not about you. And again, when your husband's triggering you or your wife's triggering you or your boss is triggering you, that's when we need to think, well, what's the lesson? Why? The, guys, this is, where, this is when you will get to a level where I'm pretty much, I'm not quite there yet. I reacted to that guy on Facebook yesterday, but I literally reacted to a level where I said, why don't you just follow me then, you fat fucking roid head? And then I blocked him straight away. Probably drove him mad all day. But again, I would have got into an argument with him. And think where then your energy is. Think where your mindset is. Getting angry is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. They won't be angry. Yeah, absolutely, Taz. They won't be angry. It won't ruin their day. It will just ruin your day because you're the one steaming, being angry, ranting about it, telling everyone. Remember what we think about, we get more of. Where attention goes, energy flows. So if your attention's on that situation that your boss has pissed you off or your wife's pissed you off or your husband's pissed you off or this thing's happening and you're struggling to deal with it, that's where the energy is going to go. And we have to think to change the mindset. What's the lesson in what happened? Well, he's taught me not to react. So I'm grateful to him because I don't react anymore. He actually had um, some glitter on the side of his face on his profile picture. And I simply replied, hey Clint, thanks for following my page. Um, hope you're okay. P.S. Thanks for noticing the muscles. Nice glitter. Big love, Lee. And he went off again. I think he posted six or seven more posts without a reply. And I just ignored them. No response is a response. Artie's got it bang on, absolutely. So again, the time I could have spent worrying, overthinking, being negative, reacting, I could have spent inspiring, driving, coaching, doing a live video to help people, replying to messages. One's gonna make me feel great. One's gonna make me feel shit. And again, that's a decision. So that was the lesson in that situation. And there is always, no matter how, like I always go back to this, there's always, there is a lesson in every situation. If you are willing to look for it. And that's why it's called what, why, lesson, apply. So again, let's use another perfect example. Years of destructive behavior. Why? Because my dad left me when I was six months old. I had no role model. Why did he do that? Why did he never love me? I know, I reckon I'm gonna find the answers in a bottle of vodka or a bag of Coke. Why would you not love your son? Why would you not want to watch him play rugby? Why were you never there for me? Why did you never protect me? Why did you abandon me? It doesn't matter. It's done. He did it. It's gone. But what's the lesson? Well, I know the importance of being a role model. I'm working very hard on being an incredible dad to Logan. I would, if he chooses to play rugby, and I sincerely hope he does, if he chooses a round shaped ball, well, we're absolutely devastated. But whatever he chooses, again, I'll be okay with it because it's his life. Whether it's ballet, playing the piano, rugby, cage fighting, poetry, or anything in between, I won't ever miss a performance. I won't ever miss a match. Oh, he won't ever want for anything. I'll never not be there for him. 
Why? Because the lessons that that situation taught me. So even in the most horrific of situations, there is a lesson. Did I deserve to be treated like that? No. Is giving my energy to it or being angry about it ever going to help me move forward? Absolutely not. Can I use it to move forward and be a better person and accept the lesson for it? Yes. Which that's what then brings you on to the apply. That's how I've applied it. And essentially, I've also forgiven him because as we've said, you don't have to forgive people, it's personal, but you have to not give your energy to it. Forgiving people doesn't mean you, forgiving people doesn't mean you condone their behavior, it just means you're not willing to give your energy to it. I'm not okay with what he did and I never will be. But I'm not willing to give my energy to it and that's why I've forgiven him, for me, not for him. Forgiving even the most horrific of abuse frees you from the memory of the pain. Because until I've forgiven and let it go, it's always going to be in my head. What I think about, I'll get more of. Thoughts become things. Think something 30 times on the trot, it will become a belief. This is why, Jan, we need to work very carefully because you need to not believe you have depression because you don't. You have very low energy. And I'm going to help you. Again, this is why I'm grateful for being suicidal. Why? Because if I hadn't and I hadn't learned all these things, I wouldn't be able to help Chan. So there was a lesson, there was a gift. And when you get to this level, guys, when you're grateful in advance for any challenge, you will become what is my most favourite word in the world. Unfuck withable. This guy yesterday is hilarious. In fact, I'm at, in fact, I'm at, no, I won't because I can't be bothered. It's wasted energy, but I'll tell you guys about it quickly. So he said, um, he said, one of my stories with my amps out, and he put, he messaged me privately, something like, put a vest on you fucking pussy. Some old guy in his 50s on about six mil a trend a day. And I went, haven't you got your top off in your profile picture? And he said, yeah, because I work hard for it. And I've worked hard for it for a year. And I'm 17 stone, not 12 stone, you fucking wuss. And just started abusing, throwing like, sending me pictures of himself, um, calling me out, saying all these kind of things. I'm just like, like I said, I just went like, nice one. Why don't you unfollow me then, you fat fucking roided block? That's how you deal with negative people. You don't have to. But again, you can apply the same situation. You know, what happened? He's obviously got a bit triggered by my pictures. Why? Probably because I look better than him. What was the lesson? Don't react. Just let people be their own. But when you can start to say, this is the listen, the difference, right? Why the fuck did he feel the need to say that? Why did my husband behave like that? Why is my fucking boss being like this? Why won't the kids behave? Why has Logan got autism? Why did that have to happen to me? Why am I feeling like this? Why do people always let me down? Two, that's why he let me down. That's why my dad left. <laughs> yes, Luke, it was. That's why he made those comments. That's why Clint wrote all that stuff. That's why my box is reacting this way. You know, it's very, I think very often if your boss is being a twat and putting pressure on you, it's probably because the company's in some form of financial trouble and they don't know what to do. But again, you never know what they've got going on at home or why they're reacting that way. It's not about you. And when you can get to this stage 
of going through what, why, lesson, apply, and then being grateful in advance, because we can't stop at what, why, lesson. Because what, why, lesson means you'll do the same thing again. So last week, what happened? For some reason, I decided to, again, there you go, Luke, he was at it with a few people yesterday, and then he deleted his Facebook. You know, the guy's struggling. He's got some form of mental health issue. Probably didn't help me calling him a fat, fucking, thick, useless roid head, but I felt the need to, and then I blocked it. <clears throat> But again, you know, you're not attacking random strangers on Facebook because you're in a good place. So what happened yesterday? What happened last week? For some reason, I decided to go to what I thought was London, but was actually Luton. Both begin with L. Actually, they're not that near each other. And I was going to get the train. So I had two hours of focused work on the way there and on the way back, going to see an NLP practitioner. And it was the most stupid decision in my life because I hadn't checked my planner. Absolutely, absolutely could not agree anymore. Taz. So, again, Luke, Luke just said a kid from around the corner was on a warpath trying to find out where he lived, reached, reacted quite differently to you and wanted to tear him a new arsehole. So that guy has wasted his own day getting triggered by some fat 54-year-old roid head just stop dropping stupid comments on Facebook and spent his whole day being angry trying to find him. I spent mine making shopping lists with Logan, which again, like... Um, Taz has said it's hilarious with our autism so we've got these 10 shopping baskets out and we're all making sure that each type of food apples socks has to be perfectly aligned on every suitcase and we couldn't leave in every shopping basket and we couldn't leave it until we had done it so we're kind of the same that's what I was doing I was having fun with my son John was probably smashing his own kitchen up because I blocked him and this other guy was steaming around Eckington trying to find out where he lived trying to kill him which three people do you think had the best day? So back to last week. I didn't realise that you go from Chesterfield to Leicester to Kettering to Luton to then get a cab. You're not on the train for more than 25 minutes, not even long enough to get the laptop out, let alone do any focused work. So I wrote off four hours of my own day. I shouldn't have put it in a day when I was going in a week when I was going to Elite Expo Pool, because that's already two days out of that week. And I caused myself an absolute shitstorm, which I told you guys out about on Friday. I had to work 18 hours on Friday and I had to work pretty much 18 hours on Saturday and about four till eight tomorrow, yesterday, before Logan got up just to catch up with work. So what happened? I took too much on him one two week. Why? Because I didn't check my planner properly and I didn't check the trains. What was the lesson? Don't take on too much in one week. Check that the trains are direct. Make sure you've booked a seat. How am I gonna apply that moving forward? Well, I'm gonna go more carefully to my planner to make sure that I don't create my own stress and my own overwhelm. So again, take that away, but we're gonna add that final bit on before we wrap up. So we go through what, why, lesson, apply. Every situation that creates some form of negative emotion in you, go through what, what happened, why did it happen, what was the lesson that I learned, and if you can't find the lesson, you're not fucking looking hard enough. Don't be a pussy. And how am I gonna apply it moving forward to create a different outcome? So again, what, why, lesson, apply. And then we launch that onto, we piggyback onto the end of that. Knowing what I know now, this is what I'm going to do differently. Then we piggyback on the back of that. 
I'm grateful in advance for any challenges I'm going to face in 2023 because I know there will always be a lesson. Imagine had I not broken my nose and not been able to speak for six weeks, I'd still be spending most of my days doing sales calls, talking to people that weren't generally interested and draining my own energy. So there was a gift in breaking my nose last January and not being able to talk for six weeks, if I was willing to look for it. Or I could have just not done anything, not tried to solve the situation, not earned any money for six months and played the victim. So then on top of that, 10 reasons I'm grateful this happened were, so what happened? There was an argument with your husband or your boss. Why did it happen? Get deep on why it happened. Okay, then work out what was the lesson? What lesson did I learn? And get to the point where we're saying, not why are they treating me like this? I, I, I get why they're behaving like that. Luke, we did this with someone in your life, didn't we? Ah, you were angry about, Luke was angry about the way someone was behaving towards his actions. And then we changed it to, ah, that's why he's behaving like that. It's nothing to do with me. And then with the what, the why, we've got the lesson and then we apply it. But if you don't apply it, you're a mug. Because if you don't apply it, then you'll just do the same thing again. But then when we move on to being grateful in advance, so again, this is a game changer, guys. When something really shitty happens in your life, and something really shitty will always happen in all of our lives because that is what life is. And if life isn't challenging, you're not playing big enough. You're living in your comfort zone. You're never going through discomfort. 10 reasons I'm grateful that happened are. Guys, that's all I've got. I love you all for being here. So remember, what, why, lesson, apply. Then we go, knowing what I know now, what am I going to do differently? Rather than asking, why did they treat me like that? We look at, ah, I understand why we did that. And when we've gone through that process, we then apply 10 reasons I'm grateful this happened are, ah, write them down, commit to being grateful in advance for any challenge that comes our way. Because if we're not facing challenge, we're not playing big enough. And that will move the needle of your lives forward. Guys, I love